This is definitely the best anchorage we've been in. It's hideous. It is absolutely stunning. One great hideous mess. It is what you would expect when you buy a boat and you want to go off and find a little tropical island. That's heartbreaking, I think. We're just going to move the boat to the next bay or maybe the bay after. Uh, get a little bit closer as we're going to head out of Lombok eventually. <laughs> uh, so it's just, just across the bay, just a little motor straight across and what a beautiful day to do it. Finally, we are leaving the secret gillies on the southwest corner of Lombok. We've been here for what feels like two years, in a good way, but reluctantly we're moving on and we're going to head north along the west coast of Lombok before then deciding where to go next. Do we go west? Do we go east? Do we go north? Oh, it's all exciting! Anyway, it's the most perfectly flat morning and since we're only moving for about an hour, and it's along the coast and it's a little bit like that. We're just motoring, there's no wind, which doesn't seem to be a problem. It's easy to do and uh, beautiful and pleasant, but as you can see, I've got the sun straight in me uh, and it's pretty hot. Excuse me. Excuse me. What? What are your thoughts? I want to go out of the sun, are my thoughts. Um, and we need to put the snubber on. And it's going to be quite noisy because you've got a lot of children from this village, but it's quite nice. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you've got a mosque and the main road. <laughs> so we've yet to put the snubber on. I just want to see how the boat settles because this is a very tight little bay. Um, we're in 20 metres. And the reason why we came, why I came here, why I wanted to come here was because a few weeks ago, we stopped off at that beach just there. There's a little warren, little local restaurant on the beach. And I remember sitting there looking at the charts and the satellite images thinking you know what this would make a nice little anchorage so here we are come to check it out but as i say that you can't see it obviously but half of this bay is reef so i've chosen the spot right in the middle and it gives us 100 meters either side of the reef and the shore um, but uh, as we came out there were quite a few currents so i'm not sure how the boat is going to settle so i'm just going to just leave it for a few minutes give liz a break from the the, the heat it's not even nine o'clock yet but uh, it's hot already so yes let's see how we get on shall we Morning. We have another short trip planned just around to the next bay, which is now down in the corner of Lombok. We just waited until 10 o'clock because there's quite a few reefs and rocks and obstructions which we want to try and keep an eye on. Obviously the higher up the sun, the better visibility we'll get of those uh, objects underwater. We just had a problem weighing anchor, it got caught on a rock, so did the usual trick of moving the boat around different angles and uh, used the snubber to take the strain to yank it up, but anyway, I think we're there. Nice little stop here. Really not much to show because we were using it to provision. So yesterday uh, we got picked up by Aman, who's uh, one of the drivers that we use, very nice guy. And uh, we just spent the day in Mataram filling up the boat full of um, crap, but edible crap. And uh, last night it was very busy here in this little town, just by the uh, jet town jetty over there. They had a sound system and singing and a stage and God knows what. But we are literally just gonna go across here and the reason why I wanted to uh, just show you that is because 
when you look at the chart, um, it's unnavigable completely. The whole of this area is supposed to be uh, less than two meters and there are various rocks and reefs. However, as you look across, I don't see so many obstructions. We've waited until midday so we can see the reefs. Um, so we're just gonna give it a go. We're gonna go over where it says less than two meters and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Well, we've just arrived. Uh, we've got some very nice looking beaches, a couple of nice looking hotels, lots of bird sound. I'm just taking my pegs down because they're a bit unsightly. Well, I almost didn't bring the camera. We just wanted to nip over to just, uh, well, really do a quick recce. So the situation is this. This is definitely the best anchorage we've been in so far in Lombok. It is absolutely stunning. It is what you would expect when you buy a boat and you want to go off and find a little tropical island and sit and have a drink and watch the sunset. Because lo and behold, there is a tropical island right next to where we are anchored. I'll do an overlay to show you the uh, exact location of this place because as you'll be able to see as I pan round, that's where we were anchored this morning. And uh, you can see we're, we're completely surrounded this way. We're open to the west, uh, but at the moment, um, as we know, the weather has, has been very good. So there shouldn't be any weather coming in. And then just behind me, uh, this is an island by the way, just behind me around there, there's a tiny little cut through and I think we can get the boat through there. But the point is, is that it's very protected and you've got these beautiful little islands, like the one next to Esper. Where is it? There we go. That island there has a little bar on it. Obviously a popular spot for visiting tourists to go over and watch the sunset. That's kind of why we're here, because there is no one here on this beach, except Liz doing a bit of combing. And we've just ordered a uh, coconut juice and thought we'd watch the sunset from here, from a slightly different angle. Beautiful, eh? Well, as you may be able to tell by the sun in my eyes and the shadow of me, uh, we're approaching sunset and we thought we'd come and visit the little island that's just by Esper and uh, just met the guy, you just saw him. I think he, uh, he actually lives on this little island here. Uh, they have a, uh, I suppose, a, a warren where you can get food and drink from. His wife is fast asleep and he is busily tidying up the beach, keeping it clean. Oh no, prizes for guessing which island we are on. So we're opposite uh, Lombok mainland and uh, tucked in the corner of the bay that we were at previously are three islands. Well, in fact, there's a fourth one. There's a tiny little desert island that sits on its own. Uh, but these three islands, they're not really inhabited. But if you walk ashore, you will find the odd uh, warung, which is basically the name for uh, a little shop. And it normally just sells coffee, food, noodles and uh, meat goring that kind of thing uh, and it, obviously it's a place for the tourists to come and uh, admire the beach and also the sunset we get some incredible sunsets from here but i just wanted to show you or introduce you to two people who actually live 
on Tang Kong. This is the middle of the three islands and uh, they've just served us up a lovely coffee. The reason why I want to introduce you to them is to show you how they live. So here we have Gary, Gary yes. this is Gary yeah. and this is Boasha. Yes, Gary and Boasha. Hello. 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 I'm just going to go through here. Yeah. So effectively these two live on this island. Um, obviously they've got connections to the mainland. They'll get things like uh, rice and noodles and what have you delivered to them. Gary himself, has, funny Gary isn't it? Uh, he has his own little fishing boat with a brand new outboard. Um, but we're just walking into their back garden because I wanted to show you if you're going to live on a little island with no infrastructure at all, invariably of course, you're going to grow your own vegetables. And here we can see, I think this is probably um, some kind of marrow or gourd plant that's growing across the top. And uh, underneath perhaps a sweet potato. The rest, you're gonna have to give me a second to identify. It looks like chili plants they've got growing here as well. Uh, but it's vast, it's a very big area. And behind this fenced off area are the cows, where presumably they will, um, I guess they are using for milk and dairy but they don't really do dairy here so who knows perhaps they are slaughtered and, and sold don't know about that but yeah it, it's a big area for two people to manage you want? yes oh look yeah, yeah okay Yeah, it looks like some kind of uh, marrow. Let's have a look. He's Gary's just come over and uh, picked me a couple. Oh, lovely. Yes. Nama? Uh, timun. Timun. Timun, yes. Yep, that's definitely... Uh... Oh, they're quite spiky as well. Spiky on the outside. Beautiful little plants though. And most of the people that uh, live on these little islands or manage the warrings on the islands and by the way we got uh, friendly with Denny on the next island over where we just had uh, a me goring breakfast and he said the same thing that predominantly they ship their water in so they have water being delivered to uh, the to the warring itself um, by boat from the mainland but they do also have wells as well and you can see one behind me here we see this all over these islands. We've been told that quite often this water is particularly brackish so it's not really drinkable but it's good enough to do the washing up, to do their own washing and maybe to even wash themselves. So one of the reasons for coming to these islands we were told is that it's good for snorkeling and we were told specifically down this eastern side of this particular island well, you only have to take one look at it and uh, there's absolutely no way I'm going in that water. It is filthy. There is so much plastic in there. We actually got a plastic bag caught around our prop coming over here in the dinghy twice. That's how bad it is. And you just take one look out there and it's not just on the surface and it's not just on the edge. It's, you know, it goes down underwater and it's all around us. It's, uh, it's hideous in, in the most picturesque bay one can imagine with all these beautiful white sandy beaches and little islands is one great hideous mess of rubbish. Not just plastic, everything. Um, that's heartbreaking, I think. But Danny on the other island said that he was going to be spending the morning cleaning up his beach. Of course, it's not incumbent upon these warring owners to keep their beaches clean. It's not really fair on them to expect to keep the beaches clean uh, because it's a never ending task. You only have to look around where we're standing to see how much rubbish is, is littered all around just this, the edge of the island here. Just on the odd occasion when I get a bit depressed about uh, just generally being on the boat, if there is one frustration, it is almost always the state of the water. You know, when we first started sailing, I was swimming around the boat every single morning as part of my routine. And I really miss that, you know. Just... I know, Southeast Asia is not good from that point of view. And Indonesia, and this particular part of Indonesia, has been appalling. So the west coast of uh, Sumatra was fine. Uh, that's the Indian Ocean there, so that's rush. everything was going away from there. Um, also, the Anambas were okay, I seem to remember. And even Sulawesi was better than this. But all, all we found along this side is just oceans of rubbish. 
too depressing, I can't tell you. We often get people saying, oh, you're so lucky to be where you are. And yeah, sure enough, it's, well, I never use, like using that word luck. We are fortunate, uh, but uh, through a lot of effort, we are here in these beautiful places. But you know, sometimes I kind of wish I didn't see this. I said earlier that uh, the state of the oceans is the one thing that really gets me down, and it, and it truly is. And uh, I think back to some of those beautiful beaches or the seas uh, in the Mediterranean. I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but when I was last back in the UK, I got chatting to a local fisherman off the East Coast and uh, was talking to him extensively about you know, the decline of fishing. But I asked him, what is the state of the oceans like? And uh, this is around the North Sea and the English Channel. And uh, he said, fine, there's, there's no rubbish there at all. So, you know, it is possible to keep the rubbish down. Uh, so, you know, on the one hand, we do have these beautiful idyllic beaches like this, these beautiful islands. And of course, let's not forget the beautiful people of Indonesia as well. But on the flip side of that whole thing is the, is the rubbish. It's not just a little bit, it is everywhere. It is depressing, it is disgusting. And it is one of the reasons why I sometimes get very frustrated with sailing around these shores.